Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to pick number 11 of my favorite 30 progressive rock albums of the 70s. It's the countdown we've been doing all month here in June 2023, 30 days in June. We are both picking out, you guys and me, picking out our favorite 30 prog rock albums of the decade known as the 70s, the 1970s. So many great progressive rock albums came out in that decade. Somehow we are whittling it down to 30. I have limited myself to no more than three picks from any one band. Because, of course, like I've said, probably got five or six bands who you could have filled up the entire list of 30 with just their releases. That's how strong their output was in this decade. So I've limited it to just three. There will be a couple of uh, repeat offenders on this list here this month. And uh, including this one I'm going to talk about right now who have appeared before on the list. This is their uh, fourth studio album from this band, a U.S. band. Can you guess who it is? This album was released October 21st, 1976, recorded at a studio in the country in Bogalusa, Louisiana. Amazing how they recorded their second album in Hollywood, California. Now they go back to kind of closer to where they live for this particular record, produced by Jeff Glixman and the band for Kirshner Records here in the States. Epic in Europe and Japan and uh, CBS and some other markets I'm talking about. Left Overture by Kansas. Look at that album cover. Iconic. Amazing stuff here from the band. This, you know, basically, uh, to quote one of their tracks on the album, this pretty much is universally acclaimed by most as their magnum opus. It's also a great song that's listed on the album as well. Of course, uh, Steve Walsh. Lead and backing vocals, organ, piano, synthesizers, Kerry Livgren, electric guitar, piano, clavinet, Moog synthesizer, Oberheim, ARP, ARP synthesizers, Robbie Steinhardt, violin, viola, lead and backing vocals, Rich Williams, electric and acoustic guitars, Dave Hope, bass guitar, and Phil E. Hart, drums and percussion. So, of course, this was uh, the first big seller for the band. They, uh, If you look at their kind of certifications and sales of previous albums, you know, very modest at the time, but after the success of this and, of course, the follow-up point of no return, the back catalog really started to uh, really gain some steam and gain some ground as far as sales go. But this was their first big blockbuster album and, of course, driven by a song <clears throat> that was kind of you know, a late placement on the album, right? Late to the game as far as the uh, writing goes. <clears throat> and that was the opening track, Carry On Wayward Son. One of the great album openers of all time and uh, a killer track that again combined like the kind of hard rock tendencies of the band with their love of complex progressive rock that was influenced highly by bands from Britain, right? Uh, Carry On Wayward Son has proven to be an endearing song Decade after decade after decade, it's still a classic rock radio staple and one of the signature tracks from the band. From there, you got The Wall. Just absolutely gorgeous. And I do want to mention, so on this album, Kerry Livgren did the bulk of the songwriting. So if you look back on the previous uh, few albums that the band put out, songwriting was shared by kind of like, you know, you had Steve Walsh coming to the sessions with his songs. You had uh, Kerry doing his bit of, you know, a good amount of the songwriting as well. And then you had Robbie and Phil and Rich doing, you know, little things here and there. But, you know, basically early on, it was mostly Walsh and Livgren bringing songs separately to the to the recording sessions. But with this album, apparently rumor has it that, uh, you know, Steve was having a hard time coming up with songs. So Kerry basically did the lion's share of the writing for this album. And, and it kind of shows because if you look at the, the first three albums, you can kind of pick apart the songs that each one of them brought to the table. They both had different feels. I think Steve was more bringing straightforward rock and blues, rock and boogie stuff, you know, to the sessions, whereas uh, Carrie was coming up with these more, you know, proggy, ethereal, epic type tracks, right? So here you've got uh, Livgren writing most of the material on this album. So uh, The Wall... He co-wrote with Steve Walsh at The Wall. is just absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorite songs on the album. It's tremendous. Then you got the hard rocker, What's On My Mind, okay, which is really good. Good hook on that. 
Carrie always did it when Carrie did the more hard rocking songs. He just was really good at uh, coming up with uh, with those catchy melodies and things. And of course, you got Miracles Out of Nowhere. What an amazing vocal on that, right? I mean, you know, Steve Walsh, just such a tremendous, tremendous singer. And actually, you got, uh, uh, sorry, Robbie sings that particular one, which is one of my favorites from him from the vocal perspective. Um, but yeah. Excellent, excellent stuff. Then you got Opus Insert on side two, Questions of My Childhood, very majestic song, right? That also is co-written by Walsh and Livgren. Then the great uh, Cheyenne Anthem, okay? So melodic, the violin, just tremendous. And then, of course, their big epic, well, it's eight minutes and change. It's not really that long. I mean, that's the one thing about this album. It's like nothing is really overly long on this album, save for that. Miracles Out of Nowhere and Magnum Opus are the two longest tracks on the album. Actually, uh, Cheyenne Anthem is also just under seven minutes long. Um, but Magnum Opus, you know, it's broken down into, uh, you know, six parts. Amazing musically. It's just such a tremendous, tremendous prog track. Great use of Moog synthesizer. The guitars are great. It's, you know, this is pretty much, uh, to me, Kansas' is perfect album. There's not a duff track on it, and it just consistently, and, and the, the sequencing is just excellent. I look at this album, and I look at Point and No Return. It's really just perfectly placed albums as far as the track listing goes, the sequencing, and the nice mix of you know harder rockers and just pure American progressive rock and just exquisite violin, layers of keyboards, whether it be Hammond or, you know, Moog or piano or whatnot, d dueling guitars, right? Uh, the great dual vocals, uh, just a classic, classic album and a wonderful production. I mean, nice, warm, inviting production. You can hear all the instruments just absolutely perfectly. Um, really, really good stuff. I can't talk highly enough about Left Overture. I feel like I've talked about this album quite a bit on the channel over the years, and uh, I'm talking a lot about it now because it's just it's it's one of one of my favorite albums from this decade, prog rock or otherwise. So uh, that is my pick for today. You might be saying, well, Pete, you love this album so much, yet it's only number 11 on your list. Yeah, but like we've talked about many times, it's like there's really not much separating a lot of these top albums here, right? So, you know, yeah, I'm putting it at number 11 today. Uh, you know, next year I could say, ah, let's move up to number six, right? It's just the, the, the depth of how much I like albums more than each other on a list like this is minuscule. Right, so tomorrow's pick is like, you know, I don't really like it all that much better than this. It, we're kind of splitting the airs here. So, um, yeah. I do want to make a quick comment. So I saw someone uh, in the comment section yesterday uh, post that, um, you know, it's you, your, the top half of your list is probably pretty uh, predictable. I would have liked to have gotten a little more unknown nuggets in this list. And I'm like, well, this, these are our absolute favorites, right? You know, occasionally, you know, we have had some more obscure stuff lower in the list. But, you know, if, if all you came to this uh, series looking for obscure prog albums to, to latch on to, that's why we've done so many shows based on obscure prog. That's why we've done all these forgotten favorites. I mean, I did like a whole month, uh, like a year or so ago, a whole month of forgotten favorites across prog and hard rock and stuff. And like barely anybody watched those, right? So if, if you're really only interested in the more obscure stuff that I like, there's plenty of shows that we've done on the channel about the more obscure picks, the forgotten favorites, right? The stuff like that. So, uh, you know, fear not. I've talked about a lot of the more obscure stuff many, many times. And, you know, unfortunately, the bulk of the people who watch this channel are really not all that interested in the really obscure stuff. I know some of you are. That's what you come here for. But trust me, we do both. But this is all about absolute favorites, the absolute gems that I've loved for decades, right? This is what this is all about. <clears throat> so, yeah, while on occasion you're going to have some obscure stuff, a lot of it's the, the big heavy hitters, right? It's, it's just the way it works out. So, anyway, uh, let's hear your thoughts on Left Overture down in the comments below. I've seen many people pick it already this month, so uh, we're all on the same page. It's a great album. As well as your pick for today. Pick number 11. And uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also, we got down below the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations as well as our merch page. So thanks in advance for all of your support there. It's always greatly appreciated. And uh, stay tuned for more stuff coming up here on the channel. Of course, pick number 10 is happening tomorrow. And uh, we've also got, uh, tomorrow is Wednesday, so we've got a new album review day. It's What's Hot with Sea Tranquility Day, the longest running show on the channel. 
that's originally why we started this YouTube channel. It's originally, it was only What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility Picks. That's all we did was album reviews on here. The first, like, I think almost two years of our uh, existence on YouTube was just to do album reviews. Right. And nobody watched the channel at all. Um, so now we just do it on Wednesdays mostly. So, uh, yeah, I got a whole bunch of stuff for you coming up tomorrow. Lots of cool programming tomorrow. So don't miss those. I want to thank everybody for uh, coming out and watching the plethora of new album reviews last week. I think last week was the most watched week of the What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility programming ever. I mean, it's like every video did tremendous uh, views and uh, some more than others. But, man, you guys knocked it out of the park. I think we got like 25,000 views across the six or seven videos we did. And then that's for, for a Wednesday for the, the album review day. That's spectacular because we generally, you know, we struggle on those. Uh, there are some weeks where, you know, barely a thousand people will watch each video that I post. And it's just people just don't seem to care too much about the new the new music that's coming out. But, uh, you know, again, I will, as I, I say all the time, that is the main reason why we do this channel. Right. You know, I know you guys love when we do panel shows and things where we talk about old classic albums and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's all fine and dandy. We love talking about our favorite albums. But the, the main focus of Sea of Tranquility, both the webzine and this YouTube channel, is to promote the new music from the new bands, from the existing bands, from the classic bands. New music, new music, new music, new music. That's why we do this. So um, so your support in watching the Wednesday shows, I mean, they're only, they're brief. They're, what, five, ten minutes long, if that. Um, those are, you know, those are really important. Uh, the bands out there are counting on you guys to hopefully hear me talk about their new release in hopes that maybe you'll be interested in going and checking it out. That's, you know, that's why we do this. So, um, yeah, anyway, thanks. Uh, what else we got coming up this week? We've got, uh, of course, Thursday is the Monsters Den. We'll be talking about our favorite... TV shows, right? We're going to talk about the horror, sci-fi, fantasy, you know, TV shows that we have loved over the years. We're picking out some of our favorites, so that's coming up on Thursday. And uh, Friday, of course, Friday morning at the Funhouse with Martin Popoff. And uh, Saturday is, uh, what is Saturday? Nothing on Saturday. And then you've got uh, Ranking the Albums coming up on Sunday. So here's the thing. So um, I am hoping to do a Ranking the Albums show of the British folk prog band griffin for sunday um, but i've got a really busy weekend with family stuff going on and it's a pretty busy week so i'm hoping i find time to get to that this week before the weekend comes normally we record those on the weekends that's not possible this weekend so uh if i don't get to it this week we won't have a ranking the album show on sunday and we'll do the griffin episode the following week and we got lots of stuff coming up on ranking the albums we got uh, you know monster magnet and fu manchu and uh, all sorts of fun stuff uh you know i've got uh, sly and the family stone and pen dragon and uh, all sorts of stuff that i'm working on with various other people here on the channel so uh yeah lots happening we're going to do the golden golden grass we're going to do um jamie lazo and myself we're going to do blood ceremony so it's we got a lot in the pipeline um but as you guys know summertime is always busy you know people coming family coming all sorts of stuff happening so uh we'll get to it when we get to it right so uh hope to get you griffin this weekend if we don't it'll be the following weekend but uh thanks for your patience on that and everybody and we'll see you soon here we more stuff i and p part of bye-bye